Hello, buddies. Today we give a proof of concept of the two phase commit. We need a two phase commit for di distributed transactions. It's not an issue for standalone transaction. In the first example, uh, I transfer an amount of money from the user one to user two. Uh, each of them has an initial $100. I want to transfer $200. So there are two statements in one transaction. We make a commit after two statements so that it's atomic, which means if one of them fail, then uh, it will roll back. In this example, uh, we first increase the balance of the user two to 300 and then deduct 200 from the user one. However, the definition of the account is that the balance integer cannot be negative. So the second statement will fail. Once it fail, we do not continue. We do not commit the two statements at all. We simply close the statements and the connection and the balance of the user one and the user two will remain the same. However, for distributed transactions, I cannot make a commit of the two connections. It's because they connect to different databases. In this example, the user three is in the database shard one and the user four is in a different database. If I make a commit of both of them, uh, right after making the commitment, I will fail it because I add $200 to the user four. However, I cannot detect it from the user three. Then the two statements are not atomic. A solution to fix them is I execute all of the statements. Only if I get a feedback acknowledge that both of them pass, then I commit them. Now in this way, um, we can save, it is safe to have the results of the user three and user four back to $100. Uh, we want to write a static method and in the static method, it's more generic. It applies not only to two statements, it can be multiple statements in one transaction. So we create a service like this. And for this service, we create a method called invoke. What the invoke accepts are the statements. It's a list of statements. Well, I call the transaction. Actually, I should change the name to statements. It's called transaction and it contains two fields, the connection and the SQL. SQL is the SQL that we wanted to execute. So rather than explicitly write and uh, have the control, we can put them inside of the invoke method. We create a new transaction and accepts the connection one. And also the statement. To make it more, okay. So just for demonstrating this example, I uh, put the transaction to the user four at the beginning. It's because uh, in this way, you can see how the user four gets $300 when the other one is still a small number. It cannot be detected. Also, we migrate these tiny steps inside of uh, the invoke method. We don't know the length of the list. What we can do is just for each of the transaction, uh, we 
set them to the all committed force. And later on for each of the transaction, we have to execute the query. Oh, that makes it then SQL. Yeah. And of course, we have to surrender it by the try and catch. Once we run those queries, it is safe to commit them, right? That's only after run all of the execute updates. Then we make a commit. Uh, however, we have to guarantee that once it fails, then we have to re remind us that uh, the failed statement. We put both of them together, which means when uh, we pick up the runtime exception, then we do not execute the second uh, commit. We simply jump to uh, here, say that um, uh, code. Last failure. And finally, we have to gracefully close all of the connections. That's it. Now let's remove the redundant statements. And just to be running, uh, it is short now. What we want to get is uh, even if we add 200 to the user 4, it will be rolled back. Yeah, we made it. <laughs>